Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Juan Pablo. I am a New York-based designer. Um, so this is, um, since this is a little bit of a workshop, and we have around 25 minutes, 25-ish uh, minutes, so I'll, I'll go fast through the first section so we can get going into the actual fun part of the code. So um, just a quick show of hands. Who's heard of CSS Grid? Good, good. Who's actually written some Grid? Written some Grid code? You have? Yeah? Okay, good, good. That's perfect. All right, so I'd like to start with a question. Um, so what do the following three things have in common? You know, Adele, a movie, and a book. Um, 1998, 1998, 1986. Basically, what they have in common, what might have other things in common, one thing they have in common is that they're all older than the web, right? And you know, upon realizing this, this is my uh, reaction, right? It's usually how I feel. We're old, uh, older than the web. Um, and, and in this, with this context that I want to take this workshop, right? Understanding how young the web is, how young this medium is. And um, now is the perfect time to learn about grid, like right now. If you're a developer, if you're a designer, if you're a blogger, if you just installed your first WordPress site yesterday, now is the time. Um, because Grid will change the way we see, the way we think, the way we read the web. Um, so let me divide this workshop into three sections. So why, how, and when. Uh, let's start with why. Uh, so let's just take a quick, you know, a quick trip back to the beginning. 1989, uh, Tim Berners-Lee, sorry, Sir Timothy John Berners-Lee invents the World Wide Web, right? Uh, there's a funny anecdote that he, um, his friends make fun of him because uh, they, they, they said, you know, the World Wide Web, that will never catch up. That's a, that's a funny name. Um, and here it is, right? Um, so this is the first page, right? Uh, I think it's 1991, it's still on. And if you notice, that's the, the layout of the web is left to right, up to bottom, you know? There's just line breaks and that's it. There's nothing else. That was, that was the beginning of the web. Then 1995, tables come around. Um, it's a very famous Space Jam site. And, and designers, right, we looked at this and we were like, yes, it's a grid. You know, a table has grids, has cells, has rows. And, and we slice the tables and we broke them and, 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 and we say like, hey, that's a grid. You know, we can actually do a lot of stuff. And we kind of hacked our way through it. Um, if you work with email newsletters, uh, this is still the way we, hey, we call uh, newsletters. Uh, we, <laughs> We use tables like it's 1995. Um, but you know, we eventually found out this was not the solution for, for, for layouts, right? Uh, tables had a ton of limitations. And it's worth noting that JavaScript came along. And JavaScript is a really, really, really beautiful, really powerful thing. And uh, you can do a lot of things. But JavaScript is not built for layout, right? It's non-performant. Uh, it's got a ton of issues. And uh, you know, um, um, Matt Mullenweg said a couple of work camps, US work camps ago, said, you know, learn JavaScript. If you learn one thing, learn JavaScript. So yeah, do learning, go ahead. But that's not for layout. The, um, that's, and oh, don't overuse your pop-ups, OK? Wait, what's going on? Ah, OK, no. No pop-ups, please. Um, all right, so 95 JavaScript comes, and it still around. 96, Flash comes around. And once again, we were like, yes, something, something to do layouts. Something exciting, and, and you know, this is a website I did for uh, FC Harlem more than a decade ago, and, and it was exciting, right? You will move like Tom Cruise, move stuff around, and you have timelines, set keyframes, but Flash had problems again, right? You needed to buy software, you needed to um, put a video on the web, and the SEO was horrible, and, and, and it had a, a, ton of, a ton of stuff that, that was going against it. So eventually, some random guy with the uh, Black sweaters, you said, enough. Um, so 98, CSS comes around. So that's 20 years, right? 20 years from this year. Um, and it revolutionized, again, the way we thought about things, right? Layout. Now we get to split our HTML and CSS, and we can do multiple stuff. And, and it kind of like changed so much the way that, that you know, we, we treated it as it was a solved thing. And, and it stuck around for the longest, right? We did this. We did this. One column and long column. We still do it today, right? Sidebar and column, sidebar and column, and and, and we, you know, we stayed and we stayed and we did the same. And then and then something happened, right? Uh, a revolution, right? The iPhone 
a ton of devices, a ton of things, and, 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 and this happens. <laughs> and, and maybe this is going to happen eventually, right? And we have phones that look like tablets, that look like laptops, that look like keyboards, that look like watches, and, and it got overwhelming. So, um, you know, we started trying to fake layout, right, and, and hide stuff, and, and so, but we never had a solution. Um, until uh, a 2010, um, Ethan Marcotte uh, said, you know, he's the father of responsive design. He said that, you know, we should look for opportunities to be just a little lazy. Like, why are we trying to build a website for one size, for one size, for one size, for one size? Why don't we just build a fluid site that works, you know, pretty much everywhere? And, you know, once again, you know, designers, we got so excited, revolutionized the way we did things, and we started doing, you know, new things and exciting things. But, you know, we took the lazy part a little bit too far. And based on, you know, on what we were able to do with the web, we pretty much built the same website over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And, you know, we were like, yes, job done. We solved the web. And, you know, once again, going back to that previous uh, slide, you know, the web is only what, 29 years old, right? We had to design websites based on its limitations. Um, and we built layouts and frameworks and, and, you know, and plugins and boilerplates to mask those limitations. Um, and the problem that happens is, is one, of my, one of my favorite plugins, right? You know, we all do the same thing and it's like, be different and you always stand out. And we all end up looking like the same thing. And it's, it's, it's it is not that, you know, Something like Bootstrap is bad. It solves a lot of problems, but it's not the only solution. Yeah, I don't so this is what CSS Grid comes around, right? It does not hide the limitations. It gets rid of them. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. Um, uh, Jen Simmons, um, her and uh, Rachel Andrew, they're like the reason I'm here, the reason I love Grid. Um, she says, you know, this new CSS revolutionizes web page layout. And we've heard it before, right? It revolutionizes and revolutionizes and tables and this and, but no, this one, it, this, time, this time it really does. Um, so anyway, right now you're thinking, okay, okay, JP, we get it. CSS grid is awesome. You love it. So what I want to know is how. So um, let me show you how you can use this magical layout that I speak of. Um, so just a couple of quick notes. Um, the following demos are on Firefox Developer Edition. Uh, uh, if you're familiar with vendors, you know, Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, they all have the public version and one that's a couple of versions ahead, so you can test it. Uh, Firefox Developer Edition, is, it's, it's beautiful. It's got, I'll show you how to use it in a second, but it's, it's, it's got a, a ton of cool, handy tools that help you with CSS create. So that's one thing. And then um, the second note is, for these demos that I'm, that I'm showing you, um, all, all I have is one container with six, li six little boxes inside. I'm good with French, right? Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, right? Uh, so six boxes. And then I just gave them a color so you can see. That's all I'm going to use when it comes to HTML and CSS. That's not great. All right, so that's just some magic. Um, this is the first layout. So what's going on here? Um, so there's four lines of CSS, right? Display grid, columns, rows, and grid gap. Let me play this. All right, so what is that with display grid? So display grid is basically you tell your computer, your browser, sorry, hey, this is going to be a grid layout. That's it. That's all you need. And the browser already knows the browser will do it for you. Uh, then. One of the beautiful things about CSS Grid is that for the first time ever, since we have two-dimensional layouts, right? Have you ever heard of Flexbox? You've heard of, you know, we did with floats before. Uh, you can do one or two. You can do vertical, horizontal, right? And then think about when you work with a poster, when you work with, with print, right? You do these fantastic grids, fantastic things that are two-dimensional, right? You just don't think one way or the other. So this allows us to work with columns and work with rows. So what I did here is, um, I have to look it up. So it says grid template columns, 1FR, 5FR, 3FR. FR stands for friends. No. Uh, FR stands for fraction. And that's a new thing that comes with grid. Basically, we have so many units in the web that we actually, you know, we have pixels, we have percentages, we have amps, we have rems. But we always have to calculate how much, you know, 
how much of the screen do I have? Do I have 10% and then we have something left? Do I have, you know, and then, and then our boxes move to the bottom and we're like, why? And then we have to remove the margin of the parting so that it goes back up and then it goes back down. And then you change the screen size and everything gets broken. FR fixes that. Basically, you, I, I told my, my browser, I said, I have three columns. I want one to be one, five, and three. So basically, the computer will add them up. One, five, and three is nine. And it says, so the first one is one ninth, five ninths, and three ninths. And that's it. And it just splits it for me. Then we do the same with rows. Which I told it one row, two rows, three rows. 200 pixels, 100 pixels, and 80 pixels. And it does it for me. And there's some magic happening here that the, the third row, it's empty. But it's 80 pixels, and it's there. And the browser respects it. No more like float and bottom and hacking and, 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 and absolute. Everything is there. Uh, and then it's a grid gap, which it's also a beautiful thing. Like no more paddings. You just tell it, hey, I want my gap on all my columns and rows to be 1M, and it respects it. And then you see how it works right now. If I resize it, you see I change the gap, I change, remove it. I'm, remo I'm, I'm changing the color of my, you know. And you see it's always one, five, and three. That's always going to be the ratio of them without me having to do any extra work. All right, so let's, let's take a second example, right? Um, whatever is grayed out is what I used, uh, you know. And then I change some stuff around. So basically, you have a client, right? And the client says, you know, I, I want to have an ad that's this big and that's 100 pixels because that's when I'm going to make money. So now we have span, right? I did the same columns as before, 3FR, 100 pixels and FR. And you notice I can combine sizes, right? So the first column would be an FR. The second will be static 100 pixels. And then and the next one will be whatever the computer decides the width is. Like, I don't have to worry about that. And the same with my rows. You know, I changed 15VH, which is viewport height. It's an amazing uh, unit if you've never used it. Uh, and then I just go and say, for, do, right, for my, my blue column, just span two rows. And my orange, just span three columns. And that's it. It just spans, and it does, and it does all of the work for you. And just five lines of code apps. I built a, a layout that has fluid columns and static columns and fluid rows and static rows. And it works like magic. So now you have to do, a, you want to do a gallery, right? You want to repeat stuff. So we don't have to do like, like I did here. I have to do, you know, please do 1FR, 5FR, 3FR, 4FR. And you know, what, what do you have? 20 things. So you have to, you, you can use, um, sorry, you can basically use repeat which basically I just told my computer, hey, uh, my browser, can you repeat five columns? They're all the same size. And then can you just repeat four rows? They're all 10 times the view per width. And it just does it for you. And once again, like, white space matters. White space is a beautiful thing in print. And white space happening here. You see all of that is right there. It's, it's, it's reserved. If I add something else, it will go here. Um, so let me actually animate this. And you'll see how. It respects the one FR. It just goes up and down. That's pretty sweet. Um, now, one of the issues with this is this is technically not responsive, right? Because you have an image, and the image just gets shrink and small. You open this on a phone, it's like I can't see this. So there's a really handy thing called, you know, it gets a little more complex. But basically, you repeat, you auto fit things. You can tell her how, what the minimum size, what the maximum size a column can be. Same thing, and then this is what happens when you reduce this, the the um, the screen size. Grid will know and will say, "Oh, you told me you want the containers to be a minimum of 120 pixels, and you told me to be make them as big as everything else." So that's that's why the browser, and that's what four lines of code, and you can have a full gallery right now without, you know, any media queries whatsoever. Now let's say. Um, you have a friend, right? And, it's, and they're an artist, modern art artist. And they want you to build this. Right? So with grid, if you notice this code right here and this code, 
it's not changing much. One of the, the things with grid is that things are implicit and explicit. Things just fall down naturally, they do on the web, right? On the web, everything goes from left to right, up to bottom. Uh, but you can also be very explicit. You can say, I want un, which is, I guess, the red one, to go from columns two to four and rows one to three, which this means lines, right? Uh, when you have a, a table, when you have a grid, every, each, a grid has naturally has lines, and the browser knows which line is line. So you can just say, I want you to go from two to four and one to three, and I want you to go to three to five and two to six. And you see, I can start positioning things however I want it without using absolute, without me worrying about anything like um, sending something below. Uh, so that's. And then, um, I can also use template areas, which basically I, I, you know, I can say, this is going to be my website, and this is going to be, it's going to have a header and an ad, a content and a sidebar, and a footer, which is going to have the French flag, right? And then you just decide where you want to put your container. You're just like, hey, you red one, you're going to go on the header. You green one, you're going to go on the sidebar. So you can move things around, and you can uh, just, just you imagine working with a lot of people and having a team and you, you just tell them what template area is what and then just work on that area without having to worry about breaking anything else. Um, and I think this is... Okay, so when? When can I use grid? This is 2007. 0.32%, uh, it wasn't looking good, right? Uh, definitely don't use it. And then three weeks later, boom, it landed. It was, it was a beautiful thing to see because it was the first time ever that Firefox and Chrome and Safari, they got together and, and they worked together and they work and released it around the same time. And you notice Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera, they were all there. And you know, naturally, um, the web, you know how we are, Twitter, right? We're like, where's, well, you can't see it, but it says, uh, what about Explorer? What about Explorer? What about Internet? What about Edge? What about Edge? What about Edge? What about Edge? You know? So, Edge is a little behind, right? And this is the part where I will tell you, go and vote. So they implemented, but they did. October 17, they sent an update. It's here. So Edge has it. And a ton of the other browsers have it. So now 70% is here. Um, this is a couple of weeks ago with 82%. So <laughs> the point is, you can start using it right now. You can, you know, um, well, I'll tell you how. Uh, support for those that don't use it. For those browsers that, you know, they're still, you know, you have the Edge Explorer and you have uh, a couple of, uh, they're not here, but you know, a couple of browsers that are used either in, in China or India or overseas, they might not support Grid yet. So you have supports, which basically you tell the browser, if you support Grid, use it. If not, use whatever you used in the past. It's really beautiful. Uh, so if you want to start using it, uh, my full recommendation is just <laughs> follow Jen Simmons, follow Rachel Andrew, see everything they do. She built, uh, uh, she just released a YouTube series on Grid. Uh, she had a, a website called Labs at Jen Simmons that has a ton of experiments with Grid. Rachel Andrew, she, she actually built the course on CSS. If you want to learn CSS from inside out, she has a, an amazing course. Um, well, you learn things like, do you know what CSS you can actually just uh, style the first letter, the first line of text. You can do uh, uh, a ton of wonderful things. Um, and then the Mozilla network. That's where you, uh, um, that's where I go for my, my, my grid specifications. There's a new specification of grid coming. Uh, I, just, I just got about two weeks ago. So basically, you will be able to, like your gutters, to animate them. You will be able to say to the parent, it's grid, and then they have, basically it's called subgrid, which Everything below will respond to the, it's to the parent. So you have grid ones, you, you just write display grid ones, and everything else, you can actually style it. Uh, so you can build a Mondrian just with one line of code. Um, yeah. So how can I use it with WordPress, right? So we're here for WordCamp. I use WordPress a ton. Um, I just started, I built two themes with, with uh, grid. Let me see if I, how long do I have? Uh, one, minute. one minute? Okay. So, uh, might not have enough time. Okay, so build two sites. It's here. Just start implementing it little by little. Where wherever you see that that um, you know this could probably use a, a, a little bit of a grid instead of me adding floats or why am I doing flex 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 so much? 
where I can actually write one line of code and everything like repeats like like I did with the galleries. Um, yeah, it was a demo time, but twenty minutes. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm around to show you a couple of demos. I know it went really fast, uh, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, the future is bright, and and learn it today. Learn it right now. You're not behind. Uh, so the, with the specification two coming out, we're gonna have a ton of a ton of great things to uh, to work with, and a ton of beautiful sites. Uh, with just pure CSS. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>